Ciao, welcome, bienvenidos. This is the episode 2 of an Ask Me Anything video. The excuse to make this video was that on August 14, 2015, I started this adventure, so it's about eight years. And about the same time, this past August, we crossed the 10,000 members of this community on YouTube. So I decided, okay, it's a good chance to do an, another Ask Me Anything video. And I receive loads of um, questions all the time. So maybe I can point people to these videos to find their answers. I'm currently about to get to Barcelona. We are in a, in a little forest, about 50 kilometers outside Barcelona. But let's get into the uh, question. So I published I prompt you guys on Instagram, on Facebook and on YouTube to submit your questions. And the problem is that I have too many questions. So we will go about for about half an hour and then uh, we will call it a date because uh, I don't think anyone uh, will, will watch uh, an, an hour long video about these questions so let's i have all my li the question listed on my my phone i will answer the question in english but i will put uh, spanish and italian subtitles so if your question was in italian and or in spanish it will be answered just uh, turn on the subtitles and you will see it in your own languages so i would like to start uh, answering the question about how you make money on the road. Yep, Blank, how do you earn your life while cycling? So yeah, you guys go and watch the first video. I will link it where there is the, the answer to this question. But there are a few of those, so you can go and watch the video, the first video. And I will also link in the description uh, two videos about two couples that they travel uh, for a long time about five or six years, uh, Ulysses and Maria in Latin America with no money. And uh, another Argentinian couple that are still on the road, they split up, but they're still on the road separately. And they also uh, were traveling with no money. So you can also have some other stories as well. So let's get that out of the way. Otherwise, we always have to answer the same questions. Okay, let's get into it. Federico Di Buccio, do you run tubeless? If not, why? I do run tubeless. I didn't run tubeless in the Americas. I had a surly disc tracker and um, I was using the Schwalbe or Schwalbe Marathon Plus Tour or Plus MTB. And it was brutal. Uh, so when I had the opportunity to change bike because I sold my surly this tracker Isabella to pay for flight tickets to Cape Town and then I picked up the, the Genesis uh, Longitude I had uh, the friends of Bike Cafe send me a new, a new bike and gave me a new bike and uh, they gave me a couple of choices mostly was the Genesis Longitude or the Genesis Vagabond and I and I got the Genesis Longitude because it had white tires and I could run them on tubeless and they're very comfortable. I rarely have problems. I start to have problems when, when, uh, when I pass the limit of the tire, when I pass the 10, 12, 13, 14,000 kilometers on the same tires, that's when I start to have problems. Otherwise, they run really smoothly. I will never ever go back on using tubes tubeless it's so so good now sir uh, 6069 6069 where are you <laughs> i'm in barcelona i'm in spain anya when are you getting a travel dog <laughs> i will never get a travel dog uh, i might i i could get a cat i'm not really a dog person and also like I'm friends with um, a few people that travel with dog. For example, uh, the guys of uh, Long Old Trackers. Now it was a couple they split up, Dave and Jen. And they were the first people that I saw traveling with a dog. And they had a trailer and it was a, such a nice dog. The dog died, I think. Uh, but 
now I see a lot of people that they use it as an excuse to grow their social media because if you have a if you're traveling with a pet your social media grows very fast but I don't think it's a good idea to to use a pet just to get more popularity uh, I think it's very silly so I will never travel with a pet I think Nicolino Netti quale percorso ha intenzione di seguire per arrivare in Nuova Zelanda? Uh, what's your itinerary to reach New Zealand? Who knows? <laughs> I live day by day, I never plan and uh, the idea is slowly head into Middle East and from there I will see what's the visa situation, um, what's the, the available countries, what's political and uh, and a military situation <laughs> because I think uh, there could be a few problems in the next few years but let's see hopefully everything goes well TC memoir is it difficult to eat healthy while by packing the world as you're doing it's not that difficult if you're not as lazy as me I'm very lazy so for me is uh, it is it is challenging um, also it depends on your budget if you if you have money you can uh, definitely eat uh, healthier um, you can put more effort into stopping and buying the good food the healthy food along the way for example I just completed Montañas Vacias in the north of Spain uh, well in the center of Spain and on those mountains, the little shops you find in... Uh, it's difficult to find shops, but whenever you find shops in these little villages, the food is quite expensive compared to the supermarket you find in bigger cities. So I tend to stock up on food in a, in a bigger city, and that's why it's not that healthy, because you can't really stock up on vegetables and, uh, and fruit, and even if you can, the, you, you can't pack that many calories. For example, in 250 grams of, uh, of tortellini, I can eat twice, and it's 250 grams. If you carry 250 grams of carrots, you cannot have two meals. So for me, it's very challenging, but also because I, I have no money. So if I had uh, more money, then I would try to eat more healthy. But for example, when I did from Madrid to, and I completed the Montañas Vacia and then I was going to the coast when I arrived in Castellón de la Plana I could feel like I needed to eat uh, fruit and vegetables because my skin, I had pimples and maybe yes, it's also because I didn't shower in 12 days and I use sunscreen every day but I try to remove it and clean it at least the face daily um, but yeah, I can feel my body needs uh, fruits and vegetables at times. And uh, I wish I had a little bit more money. It, it would be nice to have like three, four, five euros more every day that I could buy fruit and vegetables also in places that is a bit more expensive. All right, let's go on top of the list. Luca Frigerio. Ciao Davide. Which software do you use for editing your videos? Is it a, a freeware software? I use the, I use the uh, DaVinci Resolve. It's a freeware in a sense that uh, it's free for uh, for YouTube usage is free basically. But if you want, they also have a a paid version because it's a professional software that even people that they edit uh, commercials they edit movies they use especially for color grading so you can use the the free part because up to 4k it's free and then uh, you start to pay and also for some advanced uh, editing tools you should pay uh, but it's not my case i don't need uh, or at least my editing skills are so basic that you can do everything with the with the free version. Paolo Chiasera, 
Water setup per il, per il deserto, distribuzione dei litri e modalità. So he asked me about my water setup and how I manage in the desert. I did the desert of um, the Sahara Desert in Morocco, mostly in the winter and also when it started to get a bit warmer after I got sick, well, after I was well again. And basically my bike has uh, about six liters of uh, capacity split in uh, four different bottles. I tend to use only stainless steel bottles because the, they are easier to clean. And I see in my experience plastic bottles, it could be Nalgene or it could be the classic uh, water bottles of uh, cycling, the elite one, I use it, they are uh, better quality. They tend to develop more uh, mildew inside the, inside the water bottle. I usually try to drink only from one bottle because I find that uh, from the saliva the um, bacteria can spread to the water bottle. And so I usually use uh, three bottles as water reservoir and I always feel the same uh, the same bottle. I also have a little um, water pouch from Plytopus, I think. It's a two liters um, bladder. I don't like those uh, bladder things, bags, how do you want to call them, dromedary bags, because they they start to smell after a while, it's, it's difficult to clean them. So if I can, I avoid it. And But I carry a two liter one. And when I was in the desert, I used it a, a couple of times because uh, I was afraid the six liters I was carrying, they were not enough. And usually they're not enough. When I'm in a, in a very hot climate, I can drink even up to 15, 20 liters of water every day. So it's important that I, I can do some planning or at least I usually fill up my water bottles and hope that I find something on the road because I never do any planning to, to be sure that I find something. But in my experience, also like when I cross Sudan, when I cross Egypt, you always find some water at some point or another. Or if you are in a trail and you're desperate, you can always get off the trail, get to a, get to a main road and uh, flag down some vehicle for some water. Matteo Maria Propersi. Come fai per il cellulare quando entri in un altro paese non europeo? Prendi sempre una nuova scheda SIM. So Matteo is asking how do I manage communication with my mobile phone when I enter a country that is not Europe? If I buy a chip or not? a sim card or not and it really depends when i started the journey in alaska i arrived till central america relying on wi-fi that i would uh, encounter on the road maybe some uh, some public uh, venues like coffee shops or restaurants where they have uh, some wi-fi hotspots and then a friend of mine came in central america and he bought a sim card and ever since then it was a it was a drag it was difficult going back not to have in uh, internet connection um, so usually when i stayed six months in colombia i bought a sim card and then i was exchanging the sim cards with people coming from uh, from a different country for example when i was leaving colombia i exchanged it with another bike traveler for a um, for a sim of ecuador and so on and um, in certain countries, if, if they're really small, I don't buy it. And I also have another device that's called um, Solis. It's like a Wi-Fi spot, hotspot, that, picks, that has a virtual SIM card and it picks up the, the signal basically in every country. It's quite expensive, but I did use it in a few occasions. I used it more in the Americas, also because they gave me a bunch of free passes and um, and less so also because the last few years i've been in europe so when i go to the middle east i will have to check again my account and uh, check the pricing and the daily passes i remember they had daily passes and monthly passes or uh, data passes uh, kind of 
I will look into it and see what's the cost. Being connected has uh, the advantages because uh, you can communicate with local people. You can uh, send uh, requests for um, being hosted. You can see maybe download maps and uh, uh, for navigation, it could be useful. Also be in touch with the people that you love and um, yeah. It's nice to have a connection. You can also travel just as easily without an internet connection as well. You get used to it. Another question of Matteo is Situazione Visti Alaska to Patagonia. He's asking me about the visas on the Americas, on the route Alaska to Patagonia. It's uh, very easy. Uh, depending on your style of traveling, if you're not that fast, I would suggest to get a uh, a visa as a European for uh, United States. It's a lengthy process because they probably have uh, so many appointments. You have to get an appointment and an interview at the US Embassy to be granted a visa. Or if you're fast enough, you can go to a, with an ESTA visa and you do it everything online. I asked for a proper visa. It's a bit expensive, I think it was 150 euro, but it lasts 10 years, so um, yeah, it is what it is. Canada is visa on arrival, Mexico visa on arrival, all Central America visa on arrival. I think Mexico, you have to, uh, Canada is free, Mexico I think you have to pay $25. And then in Central America, I think Belize was free. Guatemala was free and then I think uh, um, Honduras or El Salvador, Nicaragua and Costa Rica. I think, no, I think Costa Rica, um, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, it's one visa and they ask you for about uh, $5 and they always never change, they don't have a change. It's like $4 or something like that, they always uh, try to rip you off and keep the change. And then in South America, all the countries are uh, visa on arrival and they are all free for Europeans or at least for Italian passport. And Matteo, many questions. <laughs> Quanta acqua hai portato nel deserto salato in Bolivia? Uh, how, many, how much water did I carry in the Salardo Uni in Bolivia, the salt flat? Yeah, I don't remember, it's so many, so many years. But I think at that time I had an algene of 1.5 liters and I had uh, one water bottle of about one liter. And then I had another two small water bottles. So I think in, in total I was carrying about less than five liters. And I think on Isla Inkawasi, you can find water. Uh, they have a well or they have a tub, but it, I, I do remember on Isla Inkawasi there is, a, there is some water, definitely. Per lavarti come fai se non sei vicino a una spiaggia? If, how do I do to, to wash myself if I'm not close to a, a beach? I don't know how you do it on the beach because uh, if I go in the, in, the, in a beach and, uh, and I go in the sea, I come out that uh, I'm uh, even dirtier. So yeah, I usually carry some wet wipes, baby wet wipes and, uh, and, and, a, bo and a, a bottle with a vaporizer of, um, of alcohol. And I use those uh, to clean a little bit myself, especially my face and uh, my cheekbones, uh, well, my butt, that's it. Come sono gli Stati Uniti per la bici? Il campeggio parli spesso del Sud America, ma poco di quella parte. He's asking me how's the United States for uh, traveling by bike, about camping, and the fact that uh, it seems like I never talk about North America. Well, it's quite easy to travel in the US uh, by bicycle because uh, there's lots of warm shower hose that can help you. It's a little bit more expensive, the food. I found the food very expensive in the supermarket. Like if you want to cook a meal, it's expensive. If you want to make a, a plate of risotto with porcini mushrooms, it's expensive. 
or a plate of lasagna or something it's really expensive but the the fast food is quite cheap so i relied a lot on on that and uh, while camping is possible you have to respect private properties because uh, in the u.s people have guns and if they see someone on their uh, properties they might be prone to to use their guns so i have to be careful um campsites are very expensive because they charge you like if you had a huge fucking rv it's the same that you have a bike but there are some campsites in um in the national parks that they have a hike a uh, no hike a bike uh, bike and hiker uh, spot and that it's uh it's it's quite cheap I think uh, in Northern California, well, I hit the, the Pacific after San Francisco and I used some of those uh, camps because uh, I was meeting the same people. It was also nice to, to meet um, uh, the same people at night, every night. So I, I started to get to know a few people and I remember it was like five dollars maybe and then the closer you you get to LA, the, the the pricing was going up and then it was like at the end I would think it was ten dollars around LA till San, San Diego. I think there is a couple of uh, national parks where you can uh, where you can camp at night and I think it was ten dollars which was quite expensive to be honest. Canada, United States, pretty good. Um, in Alaska and, and in Canada you can wild camp uh, very easily in um, in populated areas in uh, in the in the US a little less or at least you have to be careful where you where you camp and also bears grizzly bears black bears they are very dangerous and so many so many in uh, North America there you will find basically bears until LA it's insane and uh, I'm glad I'm, I'm not there anymore. Agnes from France. Which countries already cross would you like to go back and why? Well, pretty much all of them. But I would like to go back... Well, the winter is finishing in, in Europe. Well, the summer, sorry, is finishing in Europe. So I would like to go back to some hot place some tropical place with coconuts, that'd be nice. I don't know, Mexico would be fun. Or Colombia, would be sweet, yeah. Um, or Uganda, Uganda in Africa. I would like to, to cross uh, all the country instead of just half of it, that'd be nice. Um, yeah, so many countries I would like to go back to. Morocco as well. It was fun this winter. Sadly, a few days ago, there was a huge earthquake and many people were killed. And uh, it's kind of sad because I went through those mountains to get to Marrakesh and, uh, and maybe some of the faces that I've seen, uh, they're not here anymore, so. It's kind of sad. I'd like to go back to Sudan and hopefully find a, a country in peace. Turkey is also like high on my list. Yeah, so many countries I would like to go back to. Oh, Agnes also asked which countries are the most welcoming with bike travelers? They say Iran is uh, is very welcoming. I never been because I I still have to go through that part of the world. But in my experience, it's mostly Muslim countries: um, Morocco, Sudan, Turkey. They're very welcoming, and then also Latin America, where the countries were very supportive, especially. In Colombia I had a good time, but pretty much everywhere uh, in Latin America 
I was pretty well received. And then uh, a tons of <laughs> bland ins and uh, I don't know, 20 questions. Let's see, let's start to answer a few ones. Since you started your trip, what are the three unforgettable people you met and why? Well, let's pick one. It's um, the monk, uh, John, the guy from uh, at 3 I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a guy who's been traveling for, I don't know, many decades with three mules, sometimes two, sometimes one, depending on the situations. And I met him in uh, very close to San Diego. And it was uh, an important moment in my journey because I met this guy that was really humble and um, he wasn't really willing to, to share a lot, but he's really wise and um, and I think the very few words very few words sometimes goes a long way but i remember i do follow his journey it's uh it's incredible how much patience he has for uh for enduring so much abuse from uh, u.s authorities just for the simple task of uh, traveling as people did for centuries with um some mules, equestrian traveling has, has been going on for centuries, but now he's becoming a, a Nazar to the traffic. And also, I think uh, a lot of people on the US, they call the police on him because they are afraid that he's abusing the animals, you know, it's, it's insane. Um, and also I remember send him some questions at the beginning to him like you guys do to me and uh, and once i asked him how he found his trip so <laughs> and uh, as many people do to me and he didn't answer And it was a bit frustrating at first because I was like, why he doesn't answer? And, uh, and later I thought it was the best answer. And, um, I would also like to do that, but I I wouldn't want to come out, you know, I wouldn't want people to think I'm a dick. But I think in his not answering, there was a, there was a big value and I really appreciated his non-answer. Nationalities of your best sexual lovers and partners. <laughs> yeah, no kiss and tell. In which countries are the most beautiful women according to you? Ah, there are beautiful women everywhere in every country. And uh, yeah, there's beautiful women everywhere. I would say Colombia has Lots of nice and good looking women. And uh, I think Ethiopia as well. Yeah, there are very beautiful, like strikingly beautiful women in Ethiopia. Frank Miele, or Miele, how do you find our trip? Okay, guys, about this, we need to go back to the, the first video, yeah? What is the easiest way to make money while bypacking? I don't know. <laughs> Probably found, finding them on the street. Um, 
selling drug, prostitution, uh, gambling. Yeah, that's probably the easiest. Andy Gatcher. There's only half of the, the question because it says because my Habba Habba and X was a great disaster after a few rainy days. Uh, I use uh, my Habba Habba and X in, uh, in lots of different climates and I never saw one single drop uh, coming through uh, my fly sheet and I went through torrential rain in loads of tropical countries, in Patagonia, in everywhere. So, and I remember in Panama, it was raining buckets and buckets, and I had a new Habba Habba that was sent to me that I bought and uh, and received it in, in Panama, and I was glad because the, the previous uh, tent was, uh, was uh, damaged because a, a bear walked on it and flatten it and, and damage it. So that was, it was not a Habba Habba. It was a, it was a different brand that I wouldn't recommend. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with the Habba Habba. And I, if I had to replace the tent, I would get another Habba Habba again. Antonio Ricci, potresti indicare gentilmente un budget indicativo per fare la Panamericana? He's asking me about a budget for the Pan American Highway, so to cross the Americas. Uh, there's no budget. I mean, it's a it's a mental frame. So if you're convinced you can do it with no money, you will be able to travel with no money. If you're convinced that you need five hundred dollars or five hundred euros per day, you will spend five hundred euros per day. It really depends on your mental frame. I can go by with a very scrappy way of traveling that I don't need that much money but you guys all right the GoPro shuts off it overheated and uh, I pulled the battery and this was in my hand so I had to basically use a knife to pull out the battery from the GoPro so that's it this battery we can throw it away um, so yeah I will finish the questions that you guys um, sent in another video. I will do another video like this when I get to Barcelona. I will do that in a, in a couple of weeks. And so, yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't answer all the questions in one go. Uh, but thank you very much for, uh, for sending the questions. Some are really fun. And... Uh, yeah, I look forward to, to record the second video and publish it as well. And I'm really, really sorry that I'm uh, delaying in, uh, in answering the, those questions and publishing these videos. Uh, but I had uh, quite a few problems and also I did a, a big route in, uh, in, the, in the center of Spain and uh, I didn't have the possibility to uh, to upload any videos basically but I will catch up this autumn and publish lots of uh, lots of new videos of my routes these ask me anything videos so I will publish these and I hope in a couple of weeks to publish another one so I can complete uh, to answer all your questions thank you very much for being part of my journey uh, for the support, uh, I'm very grateful. Everybody that uh, comments and like my my videos and my photos on uh, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, the people that uh, sends some encouraging words, and uh, as well the people that uh, send some donations and that uh, bought my my postcards. Thank you so much for uh, for being part of the team and uh, for being part of this journey and to allow me to do something extraordinary like cycling the world and uh, very very grateful that's it go out and explore the world yourself if you can if not just do it through me vicariously i'll see you soon ciao